Hi there, this is Marbrune, and uh, today I have a new tutorial which is going to be covering how to paint metals. So, uh, metals, one of those um, surfaces that are pretty challenging to paint, especially you know the closer they get to uh, being kind of a like a chrome surface, because that involves a lot of reflections, and reflections are pretty tricky, especially if they are on a not on a flat surface, right? So reflections in a mirror are pretty simple, but when you have like a, a sphere like this. Uh, then it becomes a little bit uh, a little bit challenging. So what we are going to do first is uh, I'll be talking about kind of do a, a refresher on the uh, the physics of things so that we kind of understand better um, basically how light reacts so that we can uh, apply that theory later on. Um, a lot of you probably have seen this uh, maybe a long time ago or just recently. Uh, but you know this is just basic stuff. You probably know this already. Uh, just a quick a quick refresher on you know how. Uh, how light reacts. All right, now I have a pretty simple diagram here, and what I'm going to be uh, showing you guys with this is uh, kind of uh, what you see in a reflection and what you don't see, and how uh, how you will see it on the surface. So super quick, uh, you know, the sphere in the center will be the the metallic sphere will be like the chrome sphere, um, and then uh, this would be kind of like a room, and those are different you know colored dots, and um, so it's as if you're looking at this room from the top and you have the, the little guy here kind of just uh, looking at the sphere uh, straight ahead. So, so if we take the red dot here, for example, basically what happens is that you know, this, this red uh, like object gets, li gets lit by a light source and then absorbs all the color and then reflects the color red. So that's what you see. Uh, so when that reflection happens, when the, you know, when, when the light bounces off that surface and red comes out, the light particles basically shoot up in all directions. Um, so, you know, if you're right here, you're going to obviously see that object, but how it's going to work, uh, how you're going to be able to see it on that sphere here is that it'll, it'll uh, let me change that soon, it'll uh, hit the sphere and then bounce to your eye. And, you know, it'll do that a bunch of times in a bunch of different spots. And when all is said and done, what's going to be left is uh, you see kind of uh, the reflection of that, that red object right here. And you'll be able to see the same, the same thing here. Uh, that light is going to bounce and then back into your eye. So you'll be able to see that, that purple sphere, that purple object, uh, you know, as a reflection on that sphere as well, just in a different spot. Now, what happens if, uh, you know, if, what happens when the reflection kind of... Uh, go beyond the, the halfway point of the sphere, uh, it just never reaches your eye. So that's, uh, you know, that's why all the reflection you will ever see on a sphere is uh, just 180, 180 degree. Uh, you'll never be more than that because the light here, you, I mean, you'll be able to see that object for sure, but you won't be able to see its reflection on that sphere. Uh, it'll bounce and then it'll never be able to, 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 uh, to reach your eye. So, uh, you know, of course, if you were looking at it from a different angle, so let's say if your eye was right here instead, you know, uh, then you'll be able to see it because that that uh, halfway point would be something like this. But in this particular case, you are not able to see it. So, you know, if you have, uh, you think of an environment, you can, it can be as, as big as you want, doesn't matter. You'll always be able to see only half of the that particular environment, depending on where you're looking at. So in the case of this room, you'll be able to see that half. Everything that is, you know, uh, you know, you take the halfway point of that sphere and everything that is uh, in front of that, you'll be able to see it as a reflection. Everything that is behind that, you're not going to be able to see it. It'll be just reflected back uh, at the back of the sphere. So if we hide this again. So now that brings us to uh, what you see uh, directly. So if you if you were to look at a particular you know shape like this, uh, you know a sphere, not from a top down view like we just uh, like we just saw, but if you're actually looking at it, uh, you would see something like that maybe. Um, so what we are going to do is knowing that we see half of a particular environment. I'm gonna create a uh, you know a sphere right here, and then a quick way to uh, you know to to basically create uh, a chrome surface is to grab a spherical map, so something like that or like this. So I'm gonna grab this one, and 
So just a quick uh, explanation of what this is here. This is a, a spherical map, or uh, like if you if you Google like HDRI, uh, you'll be able to see a bunch of these. It's basically a 300 degree, a 360 degree uh, photo of a particular particular uh, environment. So in this case, you know, it's like a, a fake a photo shoot kind of studio, uh, but it's you know it goes all around. It's basically like a like a cylinder that's been unwrapped and so as you can imagine you know you have the camera here and the camera is looking right here so uh, what we want since we can only see half of any given environment when you're looking at a sphere at the, at the reflection in the sphere you will be able to uh, will what we'll want to do is get half of that so that's about this much and then that is going to be what you were going to see in the sphere so you know really really quickly I'm going to try to match the size a little bit better and then you can just deform that and kind of uh, mold it into the uh, the proper shape. So transform that, move the corners really quickly. Push that out. And there we go. So <laughs> super simple, but as you can see, there we go. It looks like a, you know, like a proper reflection, kind of like what I painted here. So especially if we zoom out, you know, it really gives the the the, the chrome effect. So it's basically a sphere that is 100% reflective. And kind of how I created those other ones, I just painted them myself. But what you can really, you know, what you can do in this particular case, you can just click and select that, or actually just lock it, and then you can just blur it. So. This will give you kind of the impression of a, a rougher, uh, a metal that is not as glossy. So there we go. So yeah, um, so that's how you do it for a sim simple sphere. So not too complicated. Uh, of course, you know, in this particular case, you can see the horizon for this, this thing is pretty much right in the middle. Uh, you know, the, in the one that I painted here, it's as if you're looking at at the um, at the sphere from a, a little bit lower than the horizon. So you're looking kind of you're looking up at the sphere. Depending on the angle that you're looking at the sphere, of course, what you see in the reflection will be different. But from any from your point of view, looking at the sphere, it'll always be half of the environment that you're uh, that you're in. Uh, the half, the one half that is uh, in front of that sphere that you're holding, if you're holding it. So uh, <laughs> I hope this is not too confusing to understand. I am going to hide this thing. So I did the demonstration with a sphere, right? Sphere is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Now, a sphere or a cylinder or a box, you know, those those things are pretty easy to uh, to understand. I guess the sphere was the hardest one. The cylinder is very very simple. Uh, it's just like a you know a bent mirror basically. But what happens when you have a shape that is a little bit more uh, organic, like something like this? Um, the same kind of theory applies. So what I, I showed you guys with the sphere here, you can always do in different, uh, different scenarios. So what I recommend is always to try to kind of um, break down this uh, complex shape into simpler shapes. For example, in this one, you would have a a sphere right here. Uh, you would have another bigger sphere right there, and then probably another one right here. What you would, what I would do is shade those big, uh, those spheres, and then kind of uh, merge them together. Uh, try to, you know, like really roughly paint over and try to uh, to make them work. So I'm gonna do it, uh, kind of a, uh, just eyeball it for the first time. So of course, you know, it helps. I'm gonna try to do this this particular scene here, uh, the one I already do on a on a regular sphere. I'm going to try to do the same thing on here. So I am going to start with, and I, I always start with the black silhouette whenever I paint chrome because uh, everything, basically you're just adding light on top of it. Uh, there's no real shadows. It's just, uh, you know, other than the kind of like the, the ambient occlusion shadow at the bottom here. But uh, yeah, there's, you just start with black and you just build up light on top of it basically. So I'm going to go at it pretty rough. Basically, I just try to take the same, uh, the same kind of, same kind of background and deform it 
as much as I can, as best as, best as I can, to fit that weird shape. So all those straight lines now are going to be following, you know, the curve of that object. Something like that for the table. In case you didn't realize this, uh, you know, the sphere and that white thing at the bottom here. That's uh, the reflection of the table. Color pick that. Make sure I get the right colors, right values. And can't forget the two windows. All right, so you know it's not perfect, but uh, you would get something like this. Uh, when you look at it from the distance, it looks kind of chromey, right? And it, lo it looks like it kind of works. All right, so that's pretty much uh, all, all I wanted to cover for, uh, you know, as far as, as chrome surfaces. Uh, chrome surfaces, just it's a big mirror, right? So uh, the metal itself doesn't have much properties. Just you're just reflecting basically everything in your scene. So it gets tricky when you have, you know, a lot going on. In this case, it's very, very simple. But if you have like, a, you know, an environment like this, like a, a house, uh, imagining how everything kind of bends and uh, that get, that can get a little bit tricky. So the, you know you can do it in perspective for sure. There's there's a way to do that, uh, but it's just uh, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, so in this case, you know if you have something like uh, something crazy like this, I would just deform you know half of your uh, your environment and kind of do the same process. You know, so wrap this around your sphere just like that and then you have a chrome sphere Ta -da! that is reflecting everything all right and then yeah finally you might want to add some uh shadow at the bottom of that sphere because you know that sphere as an object blocks the light to some extent so uh you know towards the bottom uh you would have some uh some ambient light that is being blocked uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, uh, you know, if you had the more complex shapes like we had before, uh, all you do is just deform, you know, deform that photo to to kind of make it make it work. And uh, yeah, the other types of metal, like the the more uh, like the 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 more dull metals, uh, those are just you know blurrier versions of that. So that's pretty much it. You know, that's that's the the logic behind it. You know, if you have a metal that is a little bit more dull, like maybe like the the middle version something like that uh then you would kind of just squint at the the far left version and you know whatever you can pick up like whatever like blushes of colors and like different like shapes and highlights uh, you kind of just paint those in uh, a little bit more more rough all right guys so that is going to be it for this part of the tutorial so i actually decided to extend the tutorial a little bit more so i spent some extra time and i am going to be including the like the the other part basically uh the extra i think it's a, about an extra 30 minutes uh i will be including it as a kind of like a package on my qbrush store so you can uh get that right here so you know if you want to learn a little bit more and i'm also including a a, a pack of 12 uh, metal gradients to be able to to cheat so i ex also explained that uh, that aspect of it that that cheating part uh, in the uh, you know the longer version so yeah if you're interested you know feel free to pick it up it's gonna be super cheap the good news is that I have a coupon code that you can uh, check in the description below so it will be only well it will be for you guys right so um, if you uh, if you want to check the rest you'll be able to to get it at 50% uh, off so uh, just wanted to throw that out there if you know if not no worries uh, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys next time I see you